The Advanced Frame Editor is a fully featured and integrated drawing and animation suite inside of Beyond. Because this is the case, we don't have near enough time to go into every single detail and instead we will focus on the main features you will need to get drawing and creating using this tool. To create a new frame using the Advanced Frame Editor, right click in it on an empty cell in your workspace and click New Frames Advanced. This will open the tool here. On the top we have drop downs for many options. File lets you do lots of your normal new open and save functions. As well you can find our advanced tracer tool here. And you can click here if you want to publish your frame to the cloud. Edit mostly has options for selection of points, copy paste of points, plus protections and locks on points. Points mainly has options related to automatic optimization of your frame, which almost always has to do with editing your points and thus the label. You can optimize blanking, clean up your frame's dense points, clean up your path, transform points from blank, black to blank, and down here you can also modify visible points to change density automatically and more. Under transform, you have options for predefined transformations to your frame, like centering, rotations, scale, flatten to an axis if you're working in 3D, or even if you want to warp your frame around an object in 3D. Under quick, we can change spacing, overall, or per tool. Under frame, we have options related to the bottom area where you can animate. We'll cover these soon. Under view, we have all options related to how you center preview view looks for showing off how your points look, directions, blanking, etc., which helps you understand your frame as you create it. In background, you can import pictures or use reference images to trace from or help you guide your drawing. Settings is where we have the settings for different tools and elements kept in plate in one place. Under Tools, we have every single tool for drawing and creating the advanced frame. Under Play, you can start or stop your animation and enable an extra preview window, as well as show it live in lasers. Lastly, under Window, you can change the number of viewports if you're working in 3D, view groups of tools on the right and bottom, and a few more tools. Plus, you can decide which tools show up on the left tool area. I recommend clicking Full, full Tool Set. Below all these dropdowns is the button for some of the other options within these dropdowns that you will use all the time, starting with saving, copy pasting, viewing of your frame, and binding. Next you have the laser cursor to see your mouse position in real life, auto spacing options, play and stop, preview window, visibility of the right and bottom areas, the frame analyzer which is covered in a separate video, and if you want to lock movement on different axes of your frame. On the left side you have your tool set. Tools are colored depending on what type of tool they are. You have vector-oriented tools in green with white dots and point-oriented with orange and white dots. Things mainly in blue are about selection, positioning, scaling, and modifying already drawn frames. This group is for coloring your points. These tools in neon green in this group are the classic DLD 2000 tools for users who would rather use those tools. Below that we have a few extra scattered tools that are newer or serve a specific purpose. The bottom part here is for color selection. You can control color overall, or create color gradients with these tools. You can select a color before you start drawing to use that tool in that color, and you can double click this big color rectangle just to pick your own color. In the center is your area to build your frame. The center preview window is where you draw your content, edit and work, just like a canvas or 3D space and other creation software. And while it looks 2D, it is actually 3D, and we can click here to change sides to view from. Also, on the top left we can select a view, rotate around the view, move the view, and zoom. Zoom of which can just be done with this mouse scroll wheel. Let's just briefly draw a line in the front view. This will draw the lines on the X and Y axis without any Z axis. However, if we rotate to a specific 3D view and draw another line, it will be drawn on that plane. So you can see how you can create 3D drawings inside of this tool. As well, remember you can go to the window and open multiple views if you're working in 3D. On the bottom, you'll see all points within your frame, their position and color. You can use this to go through the points to find and select specific points in your frame. As well, you can group and activate slash deactivate points using this green bar. On the bottom, we have our frames for animation purposes. You can add a new, open and save specific frames here, copy, paste, cut and duplicate, insert empty, clear and delete frames. You can also select all frames with this, op with this button. With this lock icon, you can secure content to lock it in different ways. This is covered in a separate video. As well, the info button will let you know what, if any, security the frame has. Once you have multiple frames, you can move between them like this. On the right of this window, you have a few more tabs relating to a few things. First is your point properties. 
If you select an individual point, it'll show all properties it has, like its position, color, and fading. As well, you can change the point to be a point, a vector, or spline. You can also decide how the conversion from point to vector works in the last panel. Next, you have properties for the entire frame slash animation. You can choose if these options are going to be for each frame or for the whole animation. Then you can label the frame, choose color balance, and even select zones for that exact frame or for the whole animation before you give it zoning in the workspace. At the bottom, you can choose how you want it to scan with calculations from scan rate or absolute PPS. Plus, we, use, we can use force vector mode here, even add custom optimization settings for your anchors and more. The next panel, you have view options. Most of these are also located in different places where relevant. The last panel on the right is parametric shapes panel. If you want to make parametric image queue types and insert them into your frame slash animation, you can do so here. Now that we have covered where everything is and briefly what they do, let's create a few examples. First, we'll create a standard laser graphic. This could be a logo or character or anything really that you want to be a frame. Let's create a new frame slash animation by right clicking on an empty cell in the workspace and creating a new frame advanced. Now we will import the image we want it to create into the background by going to background, open frame and current and select our image. Then we'll set the brightness of this image to 10% just to make it fade in the background. Now we can pick from many of the tools on the right to draw it with. My personal choice is line point oriented for this application, but other tools could work. And we'll just select white for now. Now we can start to draw and trace our frame just using our mouse. Once we finish tracing, we can use this paint roller tool to recolor, clicking the color and dragging over points we want to recolor. After we are done with coloring, let's use one of the optimization tools to clean up our frame automatically. Under points, click blanking optimization. This will organize your blanking jumps in the most effective way. Now we can create another queue for laser mapping purposes. Create a new frame in your workspace. Now, before anything else, let's do a couple things. First, let's assign the frame to the zone we want to draw from. Then we will enable laser output. And lastly, use a tool called the laser cursor. This will show where your mouse is in real life over your zone, which will guide you to where you draw your lines. I prefer to use the point-based line tool for this mapping, but you could use any of the tools once you explore them all. Now we can draw the lines we want to highlight on our mapping structure to create our frame. Once you've done that, you can click OK and add effects to the frame to do the, all the laser mapping effects you have seen before. In our last example, we'll do automatic animation by interpolation by animating text. Let's make a new frame slash animation. Then we can use the text tool here and write the text we would like. Then we can select it and scale it, plus position to move it to our starting point. Now at the bottom, we will duplicate the frame, select the, that frame, and reposition our text to the end point. Then under settings, click playback settings. This will allow us to create a morph between the frames. I will just select time based, select accelerate slash decelerate, select morph between each frame, and end action to stop. Then we'll make it be only one frame per second to make a nice speed and press OK. Once we press OK on the editor and play the frame in the workspace, it'll morph between the frames. Thanks for watching our Quickens video on the advanced frame editor. While this is one of the most feature rich areas of Beyond and it is impossible to cover incredibly quickly, we hope this video gives you a great starting point to experiment and create your own content. If you still need help, feel free to contact our support line by emailing support at pangolin.com.